So hello, everyone, and welcome to our industry-focused podcast, where we'll be focusing on the franchising industry. I'm Sean Monroe, Regional Vice President, Business Financial Services, and I'm happy to be joined today by Sherry McNeil, President and CEO of the Canadian Franchise Association. Hello, Sherry. It's great to have you join us today. Well, it's wonderful to be here today, Sean. Thank you so much for the invitation to join you. For those of you who don't know, I'm just going to start talking about franchising for a couple of minutes and give a high-level overview. So Canadian Franchise Association is a national not-for-profit association. We are a community of over 700 corporate members, which are representing franchisors, franchisees, and suppliers, all to the franchise industry. Our primary purpose is to help everyday Canadians realize the dream of building their own business through the power of franchising and the franchise business model. We do this through mainly three ways, community education and advocacy. So community, we help build the community that works together so everyone can succeed. Second, education. We deliver learning opportunities that make franchisors and franchisees stronger. And last, but certainly not least, advocacy. We help governments across Canada, federal, provincial, municipal, understand the power of franchising by advocating on the issues that are important to our members. Franchising is really about being in business for yourself, but not by yourself. It's all about collaboration, partnership, and the idea of growing together. That's the core principle that exists at the very heart of franchising. Franchisees and franchisors are much stronger together than they are as individuals. And the CFA, we work with our members to help them and the franchise community grow because it's really a symbiotic relationship of shared success between the franchisee, the franchisor, and the CFA. So we've been getting a lot of questions into our office about what's going on with franchising since the Great Recession of 08 to pre-COVID-19. So franchising, many of you might not know, is an economic and actual social powerhouse with enormous impact on the Canadian economy. A lot of people don't realize this, and actually a lot of franchising people don't even realize this. But in our most recent economic forecast from 2019 shows that franchising is actually the 12th largest industry in Canada, and it's well on its way to becoming number 11. So a couple of key points I'd like to highlight from that 2019 report, we are the 12th largest industry in this country. Franchising is a hundred billion, yes, billion dollar sector to the GDP every year. We employ 2 million Canadians There are over 76,000 franchise locations. And very interestingly, every day, Canadians interact with three to five franchises every day. So pre-COVID-19, stop and think about your average day. So your commute to work, where did you buy coffee? Did you drop your kids off at daycare? Did you grab lunch? Did you stop at a dry cleaners, get your nails done, get your hair cut, get your pet groomed? Where did you buy dinner? Franchise, 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 franchise. Three to five franchise businesses each and every day. So COVID-19. It's a pandemic, as everyone knows, it is impacting every aspect of the world. And no business, franchise or not, is completely immune And many have had to pivot and adapt to what's going on. Franchises are naturally better suited to weather economic storms because of the inherent strengths of the franchise business model. So strengths that include such things as support from the franchisor, established brand, brand recognition, the community of other franchisees or peer groups that can be drawn upon, the research and development and the advertising that the franchisor does on behalf of the franchisee and the collective buying power of the franchise business network. Franchising strength comes from the concept of growing together in the sense of community. We know that we are better together and united we are strong as a franchise community. Franchises 
and franchisees have more support than non-franchise businesses have. It's a great business model for both franchisee and for franchisor. Well, Sherry, that was just a tremendous overview of, of not only the strengths, but also how how uh, the franchise model has evolved uh, since uh, 2008 and, and just the, the sheer powerhouse it is in, in uh, the Canadian economy. So maybe I'll ask you uh, if you've seen an, an increase in any particular franchise segment due to the, the crisis we're in right now. That's a great question, Sean. And yes, so interestingly, we have some members that we've heard from that have said their business has either stayed the same or their same store sales are up. So, for instance, movers, such as two men in a truck, retail, such as grocery, takeout and delivery options, like delivery pizza or takeout pizza, and then uh, shipping, retail shipping, like the UPS store. It's interesting because we also found out last week from a webinar that Online searches for franchise opportunities are the same today in April as they were last April, but the search for self-employment has increased by 733% in the last few weeks. So although no one can predict the future, I can tell you about what happened in the Great Recession of 2008 and the couple of years after that. So, for example, in Canada, we saw an increase in franchise locations from 08 to 2010 of 6.5%. In New Zealand, just as a benchmark, they saw an increase of franchise locations in their country by 5.3%. Subway experienced phenomenal growth through that time and increased the number of restaurants they had by almost 6,000. And commercial cleaning franchise, Jenny King, added over 4,500 locations during that same time frame. The other interesting part is that people started to franchise a business from 08 to 2010. And we saw in Canada a 23% increase in the number of franchise businesses during that time frame. Wow, you know, that 733% stat really tells you what's on the mind of, of Canadians, and, and I think that's going to be pretty telling as, as we move through this. So maybe um, outside of the government relief programs that, uh, that are in place, is there a support that the Canadian Franchise Association can provide to help support franchise businesses? Well, we provide three main areas of support for franchise businesses. So when COVID-19 first hit, we instantly starting to provide education on COVID-19 and information to our members through webinars, articles, daily updates, and links to government uh, relief measures. Our second area that we provide support is through advocacy. So we have been at the table trying to influence government and fight for our members every day. So we're on a regular call with the federal government every day as a key stakeholder. And we've been instrumental in getting certain relief for the businesses and our members of the CFA. And the last is through community. It has become more important than ever as our members are helping each other and they're providing guidance and support to each other. That's really, really important uh, support. So I'm sure it's on the mind of a lot of our listeners. Uh, Are you finding that there's still a market in the franchise industry for both buyers and sellers? We are finding that there is still a market for buyers and sellers at this time. So we have members who are selling franchises right now. We have members who are working to fill their franchise pipeline right now for future openings. And we have the opportunity of existing businesses that are being sold from one franchise only to another right now. Times of crisis are always difficult, but crisis can also create opportunity for some people. And we know that Canadians, as I mentioned, are exploring self-employment, business ownership, and franchise ownership online, an increase of 733%. So that's very, very interesting. People are hit by layoffs. They become interested in working for themselves. And franchising is an option available to them. Unfortunately, though, there will be businesses that will not survive COVID-19. 
However, a new business will need to fill those vacancies. So the opportunity for real estate is great. Franchising has great opportunity uh, and franchisors can help their franchisees set up quicker. So there's faster time to open. There's more brand recognition and support throughout that opening process if they're starting a new business. I would say if people are serious about becoming a small business owner and a franchise small business owner, they should start their process now. That's great advice. And, you know, over the past six weeks uh, in, in our business, we've heard of just some, some really wonderful acts of humanity where, where businesses have helped other businesses uh, and, and people have helped other, uh, other people as well. Um, have you heard of some of these, uh, these experiences with franchises doing the same where they've been looking for creative ways to help each other through these times? It's been amazing to watch our franchise community work together. So, uh, we've seen them come together, support each other. A couple of examples that I can give you is uh, some of our senior members on our board of directors. So specifically, John DeHart, who has built several brands, and he is also the founder of Heartify. And then David Drucker, who is the president and CEO of the UPS store, have been providing ongoing advice, guidance, uh, instrumental in our webinars, and ongoing support to other franchisors. We already had a a Zor-to-Zor mentor program that is actually flourishing right now, which is where we match senior franchisors to work with new and emerging franchisors to provide ongoing support. And then our webinar series actually is a key example of how our members are sharing best practices and insights with each other, demonstrating that the franchise community is working together to become stronger and stronger. Wow. So uh, I love that Zord to Zord membership program idea, and and I'm I'm sure that will just continue to add relevance uh, as time goes on. So we're going to bring our our discussion to a close. So I'd like to ask you, if you could leave our listeners with three important closing comments, uh, what would you really want to leave our listeners with? Wow, that's a that's a great question. I would say three things. First, franchising will survive this economic crisis, and it does have the opportunity to, just like we saw in 2008 to 2010, to actually increase franchise locations and increase franchise small business. For those members of the audience who are thinking about small business ownership for themselves, they should think about franchising, and now is the time to start that research. So find a brand that is suited for you financially, for your desired lifestyle, and that suits your core values. And lastly, if you're interested in that business ownership through franchising, your future should, as I mentioned, start now. But start researching and exploring, and you can go on the CFA website at www.cfa.ca, or if you're researching specific brands, www.franchisecanada.online. We are here to help you with your research. Sherry, it was just such a pleasure speaking to you today, and and I, I really love the, the the positive message that you're leaving with with our listeners. That despite the fact that we're in a crisis right now, we will come out and uh, in in some ways is stronger than ever. Uh, so thank you so much for that, and to all of our listeners and our RBC clients, we hope you found this conversation interesting. We hope that you stay safe and healthy, and that you enjoy your day. Thank you so much.